Welcome to this uh, uh, program, uh, all the listeners. Uh, I am Professor Srinivas Rao. I teach uh, Sociology of Education at Zakir Hussain Center for Educational Studies in Jawaharlal Nehru University. Uh, today, I am going to speak to you about the relevance of gross enrollment ratio in higher education and what it uh, means actually for the issues of access, equity and inclusion. The very idea of gross enrollment ratio, uh, what we kind of understand is that gross enrollment ratio is defined in the national parlance as the total enrollment in a specific level of education expressed as a percentage of the eligible official age population corresponding to the same level of education in a given academic year. Uh, we need this as an indicator to inform us about the extent to which the particular level of education has reached the wider populations or not. Uh, generally, it is calculated by dividing the number of students enrolled in a given level of education by the population of the age group which corresponds to the given level of education and multiplying the result by 100. Uh, so in our country, we calculate the gross enrollment ratio in higher education um, in terms of uh, the actual uh, age group that should have ideally been in higher education, namely 17 years to 23 years. If we look at um, the countries all over the world, the Western and American you know, systems of higher education are largely universalized. Um, they have actually reached a gross enrollment ratio of even more than 70 percent as of today. Um, uh, and as we will see, we are at 27.1 percent or so by 2019-20 and therefore we are in the mass system of higher education. Though this system is often contested, it provides a useful analytical tool to understand the aspects of access, equity and inclusion in higher education. The actual massive expansion of higher education took place in the first two decades of the new millennium. If we consider actually that, you know, from almost a 50 year period, from the time we adopted our constitution till, you know, 2001-2, we find only 8% of our uh, youth in the age group of 17 to 23 were in the colleges or universities um, seeking higher education. And, uh, and therefore, the thinking in the policy making uh, circle uh, within the country uh, had to opt for newer methods and newer techniques uh, of uh, expanding the higher education system. And as a result of the policy thrust, and uh, huge investments by the governments on the on setting up of uh, higher educational institutions, be it colleges or universities, um, and and there is a particular kind of private interest um, when there is a kind of uh, uh, demand for higher education was found the private sector also got interested in um, kind of you know in, um, uh, in providing uh, uh, you know higher education uh, services and infrastructure uh, to the masses and as a result i think you know in 2009 and 10 we almost uh, uh, broke into the uh, mass system of higher education and um, if you look at the transition in the first two decades, we could 
reach from 8.1% to 27.1%, more than three-fold increase in the gross enrollment ratios. But the questions we need to ask now is, um, has this expansion of higher education been equitable? Equitable for all regions, states, social groups, women, and other educationally and socially deprived groups. Uh, what does expansion mean for access, equity, and inclusion? What are the challenges before the NEP 2020 for achieving accessible, equitable, and inclusive higher education expansion? The, uh, what it tells us is the spread of higher education is not uniform across the country, but uh, has been uneven um, across different states. If we uh, look at the gender, it also tells us a story. Um, I have taken the statistics only for the first two decades of, you know, for just giving you an idea, which is more or less actually a similar pattern actually between the male and female. One interesting fact in 2019-20 um, shows that women are inc increasingly participating in higher education in comparison to the men, uh, which is actually a very welcome kind of a sign in terms of the gross enrollment ratio. Uh, if you look at the spread of higher education among the social groups, particularly the socially disadvantaged groups like scheduled castes, scheduled tribes, you find the numbers are still uh, very low. For scheduled castes, it's 23.4%. Uh, for scheduled tribes, it is 18%. But we can see that uh, they are also increasing over time. I think, you know, it's, they're not static, but actually there is, we can find there is a kind of a shift. Um, we also find inequalities in terms of economically weaker sections, but the government actually has come out with uh, a new policy which allows uh, reservation of 10% for the economically weaker sections in uh, entry into higher education institutions um, as latest as actually 2000, in 2019. And we have diff, you know, kind of you know, lower uh, gross enrollment ratios for linguistically disadvantaged, for religious minorities, and for those coming from the rural areas. As we all know, actually, much of the higher education is urban-centric. Expansion is largely uh, specific to the urban centers. Hence, the rural areas, forest and hill areas continue to be underserved in terms of higher education. The uh, teacher-student ratio at about 1, one is to 50 is certainly a kind of a matter of concern because it doesn't really uh, allow equitable kind of learning opportunities among uh, the students. What then actually is therefore wrong with the current trend of expansion and we will look at how um, the NAP 2020 is going to be confronted with a lot of challenges and as well as opportunities. Um, so if you look at the rapid expansion that took place uh, in the first two decades of this new century, 21st century, the expansion is largely quantitative but not qualitative. And the demand for higher education from middle and lower middle classes is now acting counterproductive to its own aspirations of good quality education or educational advantage or privilege because a large number of the private higher education institutions remain uh, less qualitative or, uh, or poorly equipped uh, and that actually acts counterproductive to the interests of the middle and lower middle classes in the country. Then set in this broad background, how do we really look at the NEP 2020 proposals and goals and what kind of challenges we are, our opportunities uh, we are going to confront. 
The first actually issue is that NEP 2020 envisions to achieve a gross enrollment ratio of 50% by 2035. That means from now on in about 13 years, we are expected to reach 50% from 27% as what uh, we are today. The challenge is how to bring those states that are still far behind even the national average of gross enrollment ratio to make it to 50% in order for them to universalize access to higher education. This, the new education policy wishes to achieve through both a robust public policy and funding and also market-oriented expansion. Uh, but I think this is where the role of the UGC uh, comes, uh, which is, I think, you know, to orient and to, to monitor and uh, the standards uh, and quality in higher education that is provided in, um, in the private uh, higher education setup. Um, it also, I think, NEP also provides for uh, the setting up of a large number of universities um, uh, and therefore that I think also will help widening the access to the groups which are unable to access good quality uh, higher education. The second most important um, kind of a process which has already been set in by the UGC uh, which actually was part of the proposals given by new education policy 2020 uh, is that to create a kind of a level playing field for access to higher education through a common entrance test, the CUET, the common university entrance test. Um, which means actually that previously we were, we were relying on a large number of entrance examinations or um, the admission procedures based on the marks obtained in the school leaving examination that is 10 plus 2. Um, but now I think there have been variable kind of uh, ways in which the state, different state boards had um, followed all these years in um, the, in the 10 plus 2 uh, grading systems. A large number of students who could not attain these higher percentages remained left out. And also I think a large number of examinations uh, leave the students perplexed, anxious all the time, their parents anxious. And therefore it is expected actually that this new move and new proposal under the new National Education Policy 2020 uh, to address the differences in the entry level inequities. The third uh, most important commitment actually of the NEP 2020 is that it uh, continues to um, commit itself to the reservations in access to higher education by providing the quota to the tune of 59.5% to disadvantaged caste, tribes and social classes. So this 59.5% actually is inclusive of the 10% reservation in for economically uh, weaker sections. And the fourth important proposal which will have an impact on increasing the uniformity in the gross enrollment ratios is the transformation of higher education institutions into a multidisciplinary institutions. Uh, that we have a large number of single subject, single discipline, universities and colleges, which are now expected to be multidisciplinary, which uh, then therefore adds the other disciplines to the college structures. And that actually enhances a kind of a comprehensive coverage and equal opportunities to study in good quality institutions as some people call that it will address what, it, what we call actually disciplinary distortions. So overall, actually, if you look at the NDP 2020, the, it actually leaves, it, it, it takes cognizance of 
the problems of higher education system. It also expects to spread and expand to the wider set of populations and it, it, it is expected actually to correct the distortions of the past of actually remaining elite for almost five decades in the post-independence period and transform the higher education system into a more equitable, accessible, inclusive higher education in the world. And that will help widen the opportunities for all irrespective of caste, creed and other social and cultural disadvantages. Thank you.